Hi, I'm Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. So FontLab 7 is my favorite font editor. I love the powerful features, and I'm going to show you how you can use those powerful features to make your own fonts. Hi, this is Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry, and in this one, we are going to be making our R. Okay, so let's take a look here. So, you know what? Before we get do that, I am going to see how fast I can do it here. So we'll put it on the timer. Ah! Okay. So we're going... This is to get a sort of a rough first draft. I'm going to add an extra point there just to get it better. My computer sort of has a lot of stuff. Oop, that one's going to need a lot of fix up. So when you're doing all smooth, it's actually a lot faster if you are doing not quite so many nodes like I do with this style, this printed style. And let me just fix this up before I <laughs> show you that. It, it's because I should have added another node in there. I will add it in later. Okay, there we go. So that is in about a minute, a fairly decent, uh, whoops, except that I went the wrong direction with that. Within one minute, a fairly decent trace, and all I have to do is harmonize everything, and then it looks quite a bit smoother. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to now get this one to the same level of quality as the other ones, where it's the, the counters are all nice and smooth and pretty and all that. Okay. So let's just move these down here. That's at an 18, this is 17. We've been doing about 15s, but since the shape is different, it's a little bit hard to tell. There, I got some curve separation, which is not good. Moving this in. And then I balance, I'm gonna balance later on. Balance all these points. See, this is not to the same part of the fuzz. I want it to the same part of the fuzz. So that way it can look good and see if I need this actually more like in here. This is a tricky part. This one I might actually want to make two nodes sometimes for trickier stuff like that. If I want to get this, the original shape, I actually have to change node structure from what I have now. Let's see if we can get away with getting rid of him. So the idea with diagonal points and all that, the more diagonal points you have, the more accurately you can describe the curves, but you get more rounding errors and you get, you can get, it's easier to get lumpiness because it's, it's now looking less computerized and it's easy to make it look lumpy the more nodes you have. So in this style, it's a balance between having nodes and, con and controlling the how it looks, but also having it look smooth enough that for modern eyes, it doesn't go, okay, that looks all crumply and stuff. Because we're not making, remember there's the other style is sort of the scanned look, and this is not the scanned look. We don't want it to look scanned or anything. We want it to look still really clean and good. We just don't want it to feel like it's a computer drew it. We want it to feel like we are smoothing things out. Look at how that's looking already. This one looks like, feels like it needs another point to help control it a little bit in order to get this over here, C like that. What I did is a, a power nudge when you hold down C and that helps it everything to move that way. So I like to use that when I'm fixing things up. Okay, uh, this one is tricky. 
because I sort of feel like we don't need the, all the way that one. I am going to harmonize this area down here. Um, sometimes I do global harmonize things. This does not look good, so let's try to fix this. Okay. You sort of the inflection there. You can see, so, so it's going down this way, but then it goes back up. So that's just something you, you determine if you like how that looks. I think that's actually not too bad. Um, okay. This one feels like he needs to be farther up there. Then going down here. I sort of don't like the, see how this looks super thin and this, well at the tips, they're actually about the same. It's more that this bracketing is different. So, so having different bracketing and I have a later step that I do where I then adjust everybody's bracketing. So it looks somewhat the same. I don't want it to be exactly equal. Once again, avoiding the computerized look, I don't want that to be all 100% equal. I want it to feel nice and smooth and whatever. Okay, so this one I might have taken him down a little too much, so I can pull him up here. So I'm just sort of eyeing it up. I'm looking up here as I'm moving things around and sort of eyeing it and seeing what I like. So since this is a display, I'm doing it at display sizes. I'm looking at it at display sizes when I'm working on it. If this was a text font, then I'm going to mostly have these at small sizes like like 18 or something and, and seeing how it looks from there. And then to get the details, then I will look at it mostly on this screen for the details. Okay, so this one's about ready. Now I'm going to add some of the curves add to the tips. Um, this is something that's okay. A lot of people, when it's the curve that's on the outside, a lot of people like to put a node at the end. And that's good to do too. It's, the only thing is that if you're not doing fractional nodes when the serifs are this thin, then you're going to get lumpiness on that. So that's why I don't do that. And it actually, everything will space okay, even when you have that. It's just going to be a little bit uh, rounded. It's, it's It works a little bit differently when you have these bulges at the end without a, without a node at the end. So like I said, if we want to have those, I can add a node here, but then we're going to have to go up to contour and we're going to have to take off all these roundings so that we do fractions. Some of my fonts I'm exploring as fractions. Now those are a lot li less practical. I'll just sort of put it at the wrong point here. I don't think I did this area yet. This one sort of needs more points, doesn't it, than the F because of how it goes up and then down and then to the side. <laughs> but Doni Ferrara, we've put that out as high resolution because it just needed it, but the file size gets bigger, not by, I mean, think about this. When you use fractional nodes, you are getting, okay. So when you use fractional nodes, you are getting a lot more because it goes down to the 10th. But when we're thinking about what's inside one square, so let's zoom up. So here's one unit squared, I think. Yeah, here's one unit squared. But if I divide these up into 10 and these up into 10, then really that's 100 smaller squares that I get in each one of those. I get 100 times, basically 100 times the resolution, but the file size only increases by about another to uh, another 50%. So that's not so bad. I think that that's worth it to getting the better, getting it to look better, especially when it's a font like one of these that sort of needs it on the tips to detail the tips. You need to add that. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do my primary steps in rounded coordinates. But then once I get to the final steps and I'm just honing the serifs, I'm adding dots to the tips and all that, then I will take these off and then I will use actually higher precision coordinates. 
Okay, so there is a version of the R, and we'll compare it to the original. In my final version of the R, I had to take his serifs a little bit longer, and I adjusted all the serifs so I get a sort of a nicer serif length. Okay, and you can just see how nice that looks. We still have to do the sideburns for the stuff like the A. So thank you for watching. I will see you again next time. Thank you.